Hi, welcome back. On this video, we are going to be learning about if statements. A special control structure. If statements are logical expressions that we use in PHP or in many different programming languages to make our code do certain things based on conditions. Let me just give you an example. Let's say, for example, you have a user going to a page in your website and you want to find out if that user is logged in. And if that user is logged in to the website, you want to show that user a certain page. If that user is not logged in, you want to show them another page, right? So you create an if statement. You say, if user Edwin is not logged in, show him this page. If he is, show him this page. That's why if statements are very important. They control the flow of our programs in any programming language, but in PHP, they are very powerful. Now let's go ahead and let's write one down and let me show you how to use them. So I'm going to open my co-editor. All right. And I'm going to use the blank.php there to do a save as. And we're going to call this if statement. If state just like a state meant. There we go. All right. So the second thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create. I got all my room really dark right now and I can't even see my keyboard. All right. So I don't know who turned off the light. All right. So The syntax of an if statement is really simple. We create a word. Now, actually, we don't create it. We write it down because it's already created. It's already defined for us in PHP. So we use the word, the reserve word if, and then we put parentheses and then curly brackets. And then what I usually do, the way I write it, I write this down is I put a cursor right here in between, right? And I bring it down. Right, so this is an if statement. In between these parentheses here, we're gonna test our condition. So if something here executes to truth, then we execute everything. If something here, okay, equals to truth, then we execute everything in between these curly brackets. For example, we know that PHP has an internal calculator, right? So we can say if three is less than ten, all right, I want you to do something. So if 3 is less than 10, we're going to write something down. We're going to echo. Let's echo a string and say 3 is less than 10. Perfect. We're going to close it with our semicolon here and let Apache know that we are done executing this command, right? So let's see how that works. Let's see, let's see it on the browser. Let's see what it displays. So it's true, right? 3 is less than 10. So that's why he executed. But let's say, for example, 3, we'd say if 3 is more than 10, execute this. Now the line disappears because it's not true, right? So this if statement will execute as long as this condition is true. All right? As long as basically what we're doing with this if statement is testing a condition here. If this is like this, if this is not like this, then do this, all right? We can say also if it's not three, all right, we can do this. If it is three, then we can do this. So we are controlling this, the flow of our program. Now, this is not the only way of writing this down, all right? For example, let's say if three, if, if this is false, we need to have a kind of a backup for a program, right? So if for example, let's come back to the example of the user Edwin, right? Going to the page, the website. So if Edwin is logged in, I want you to show him this page. If it's not, I want you to show him this. So where the if is not, that's a backup that we are using. And the backup is called an else statement, right? So if this condition for some reason is false on top and it doesn't work out for us, right? then we need to have a backup. We need to have an alternative to our code, right? That's how we control this, the flow of our programs. So we're going to echo. It is not. 
right? So we come back here and we see that it does execute because this is false right here. This is not, you know, being this condition. The truth is not being met right now. We know that 3 is not bigger than 10. So this is not going to execute. So it's going to say, okay, if 3 is not bigger than 10, then what else can we execute? If this is not true, what else can we do? Well, you can do an else right here. It is not. The great thing about this is that we can also use another keyword besides this. It's called else if. And the else if is just testing another condition. There are times when we need to test more than one condition. Right now we're just testing one condition here. What, what about if I want to test uh, if user Edwin has a, for some reason, clicked on more than three times on the home page, I want him to go to this page. And if he clicked on the blue button, I want him also to go to this page. You see, let's test different conditions. We test the first condition here, and then we test another condition right here. So we say if 4 is less than 5, then I want you to execute this. So the else if is to test another condition. Keep that in mind. We use the else if to test another condition. And we're going to say, of course, of course. Four, four is less than five, right? Now, if this condition is false, of course, it's going to jump. This is not going to execute. It's going to jump to the next one. It's going to execute that one. But if this one is also false, the default one else is going to execute. All right, so this is very useful. I want you to remember it. We're going to practice this later on, but I want you to remember this syntax here because it is very important to control the, the flow of our programs. We need to use this to make our program smarter and act differently depending on the condition that uh, is carrying out. All right, so anyways, thank you so much for watching this lecture. Hopefully you were able to learn some valuable information, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.